Bailey, he's away. Is there a wine? Is there a beer bottle okay. I can get? Hello, everybody, oh. and welcome. Thanks for being here. Hello. Hello. Um, so Justin's in the room, but he's not in front of the computer. No problem, no problem. Uh, so we have a small-ish group here today. That's totally fine. I just wanted to let you know that I am going to be recording this uh, meeting so I can share it with uh, other families who aren't able to be here right now. So. Um, so let's open with a prayer. God, we welcome you into our hearts, into our homes. We know that this is a hard time for a million reasons, but we know that you are there with us, rooting us on and, um, and providing strength and comfort and peace when we, when we dearly need it. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, thank you so much for, for um, joining us. I wanted to see first if you had any initial um, thoughts about the first question. What are your concerns, your biggest concerns about your youth during this time? Anyone is welcome to start. Lynn, how about you? What are your biggest concerns about? Oh, I think a lot of it is just, um, it's just trying to get Lexi involved because it's hard for her to get to be involved like with the church right now because we're not because <clears throat> we're not able to come to church very much and yeah. and even when we do come to church it's like now that we can really talk to anybody right right yeah yeah you can see each other's faces behind the mask sort of but um but it's certainly not the same as being in fellowship with each other yep. yeah what other concerns are there about your your youth right now I'll go. Um, so you. my daughter, Ailey, um, there's, well, there's a couple concerns I have. Um, she, there's, there's a bit of virtual fatigue. I mean, she's just in front of a computer um, for hour upon hour a day that her eyes are glazing over. And, um, yeah. and I have to be making decisions around taking her out of, of classes to get her uh, out in nature, which is, I mean, normally I would never sign her out of school classes yeah what a weird but, um, world, right where you where the health of your of your kid is um is uh better off being yeah in nature yeah. And, and separate from from school workers is a weird thought yep yep so they haven't i mean you know yeah so um so that's a just a concern because that can really um i think kind of dampen her enthusiasm for learning and for um, participating in, in confirmation or other kind of Zoom related activities. Okay. Um, yeah. So, um, and then I also have, I mean, not all the time, but you know, the kids are learning some adaptive skills related to how to compartmentalize yeah. and how to really be responsive and, and understanding about the world around and, um, you know, and balancing like, okay, how, how do, much do you, you don't want to saturate your, your days with news of, you know, doom and gloom Fair, at the same yeah. time. Um, at the same time, it, we can't ignore things either. So yeah. uh, my kids will go um, for a period, sometimes days at a time and get, you know, all three of them will just be, have like many little existential crises around yeah. the future and, and super worry. And then it's like, okay, I have to just almost intentionally not even just really focus on the present and not even mention anything else which feels a little weird too yeah. but yeah so I mean there's some things that there definitely are the upside of having all this additional family time um and and just kind of different you know like teaching adaptive skills but but definitely you know figuring out how to get her engaged particularly with um you know learning about her faith and um you know confirmation which it's like separate from what we've been teaching her as parents as, is just a challenge, I think. Mm, yeah, so I hear you saying is um, both that uh, Ailey's learning a lot of new skills because uh, you, you have to, uh, to make it through this time, but also 
it's a complicated uh, balance of, yeah, of like prioritizing her health and, and knowing that, yeah, maybe it, it's worth it taking her out of school for a minute, mm -hmm. for a couple of Zoom meetings to get her outside. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then also sort of this balance between like priorities about like uh, getting her connected to her faith, but then also what what's too much in terms of um, virtual fatigue and wow, mm -hmm. I'm not a parent, but holy crap, you guys, you guys uh, are in the thick of it. Jennifer, I just wanted to let you know that what we're what we're talking about right now is this opening question of what are your biggest concerns about your your youth right now. Got it. Apologies for late. I, okay. I, for the life of me, I was struggling with finding the invite and I was like, okay, there it is. I got it. No so. problem. No problem. Just catching you up. Yep. Yeah. So um, what other thoughts are there? What other uh, concerns do you have about your youth right now? As it pertains to their spirituality, their mental health, their academics, work, um, school life balance, um, all those sorts of things. What's coming? Yeah. What's coming up for you and your family? I'll go. I think it's, I, I think I echo a lot of the same things and also just kind of, I was curious about this conversation, just to get some more clarification on the sixth graders. Cause I thought there was a communication like in the summertime saying they weren't going to do confirmation, right. but then we're getting communications. They are. And then yeah, right. it's Sunday school. So just kind of, yeah, what is it? Cause I, I think with, with all the things, it's like, what do I, try to make, ensure that we're doing and I, and I want to encourage it and ensure that we're still keeping faith in the forefront. Um, but it's a balance too, right? Like if we're yeah. multiple, multiple things and it's hard to kind of know which should I, what direction should I go? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Good points. Yep. Jennifer, what about you? What are you finding? As I'm eating down there. my dinner <laughs> in between conference calls. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I think Bad timing. One of the things that I maybe, I don't know if I overemphasize, um, how do I say it differently? Um, so I have the fortunate situation that I am still working full time. Um, and, and being that the kids are home for virtual school constantly interrupted, and I don't have time for them. Um, and it used to be, you know, I would work, they would go off and I'd get a full work done. They'd come home at dinner and I usually still have to work after dinner. Um, uh, but now they don't get my time any of the time because I'm so far behind. And, and there are times when in bad parent mode or even in trying to be good parent mode, I'm like, I don't have time for you today. And they're like, you even said it, you don't have time for us. Like I, I just don't. Um, and so they're not getting, quality time from me and and I guess that compounds itself in lots of video games uh, later on during the day after they're done with school like they they do their school and they do all their stuff and they do their contributions or needs or whatever we've got those things but that still doesn't stop you know, they're they're being three or four hours yeah. um, and sometimes they worry about that and sometimes I'm like well that's how this is and everybody's you know that's how we're dealing with it um, yeah but I do think there's there's some socialness to the video games, which is why I don't totally mind it because I do think they need those social outlets. Because um, I think the other thing would be lacking some of that. I can tell they crave that social connectivity and the Zoom connectivity socially just isn't there for them. Um, neither of my kids have cell phones yet. So they're both, you know, they're stuck with an old landline connecting out or a school email, which they haven't really graduated to yet. So just trying to learn how to connect with people. Um, I guess those are, that's what's on my mind for the most part. Yeah. yeah, you bring up a good point about like technology being like even, um, yeah, it's not like, you know, like in terms of like graduating into like different uses of technology. Um, yeah, if they're, if they're, uh, comfort and if they're not prolific and in, in certain ways of communicating then they're um it seems like they're screwed in, in some ways yeah and kind of and they're, they're making their way right they do have um access to ipads where they can sort of do texting and and that sort of thing but i'm not sure how social that really is like there's this i'm not graduated into the technology of youth today i still have my kind of old school yeah. email and in-person stuff yeah, so exactly. just learning to yeah. to learn how to deal with that yeah well hey jennifer oh Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was saying, I mean, Jennifer also brings up another point. My husband is in HR and I mean, he's heading up an HR team across the world and they were, I overheard as I've been learning more about his job from him working from home um, and me working from home, the burden they were talking about from a workforce piece, the burden of the pandemic has been on women in sure. the workforce. It's, I mean, overwhelmingly, it's like, it's 
it's, you know, there may have been other kinds of, you know, relative equality before, um, relative, but really it's like, who's doing the heavy lift of yeah. all of this? Mm -hmm. And it's, with, and then there's huge equity issues. And well, you know, how do you reward though? You know, if you, if, if families are choosing who's the breadwinner and who's going to, you know, like try to do the juggling, um, you know, then how do you reward, could, you know, the way you reward that can even perpetuate the gaps even further. I mean, right. so yeah. it's, um, yeah, it's like the whole caregiving component to this and, and then, you know, impact on your own health um, definitely impacts your kids too. It's like having two overtime jobs at the same time, overtime full mm -hmm. jobs, right? Like, a, yeah, being like taking care of, yeah, kids and domestic work. And then also, yeah, your job, which is being, yeah, which you're not being able to devote as much time to because then you're also, yeah, because the overlap of the two. Um, right. So nobody really gets any of me. <laughs> man, oh my gosh. Man, well, that's a, yeah, that's a hard transition to go into. Um, yeah. This, uh, what I was going to say in the beginning was um, that, you know, we're, we're finding ways to, um, or we're really uh, establishing new ways of, of doing church um, in a million ways. But um, and one thing that's extremely challenging, but also uh, something that can be really gorgeous about, um, yeah, as an outcome of the pandemic is that um, like our spiritual lives uh, are essentially like essential need to be essentially like uh, attached to the home in a different way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and so yeah and so then when it comes to confirmation and in, in your youth um uh <laughs> it's hard to um it's hard to uh establish like some sort of like um requirements or parameters around like what we're expecting the youth to do um so all that's to say, uh, all of what I'm about to share with you um, and all of this sort of um, the plans that we're making and all the stuff that we have on the schedule, all those things are only gentle or are gentle requirements. Um, I know one thing I said in a, an email recently was that um, there's nothing but total non-judgment and acceptance and understanding in terms of when you're kids can participate and when they can't, it's, uh, totally fine. But I also want to, um, yeah, want to set some, um, uh, more tangible goals, uh, in terms of having your, your kids participate in. And so what does that look like and, and how do we balance all that? I don't know, but, um, but as for, um, setting some stuff up on the, on the confirmation programmatic side, I, I have some stuff to share with you and then we can dig into what that means for your families and, and how, realistic it is and also um, how helpful it is. Uh, so I wanna share my screen with you all and dive into uh, this meeting agenda, which I will share after this meeting. I also am recording this meeting. I mentioned that in the beginning so I can share this with others who um, were not available to be part of this. So here we go. So. Um, first, I shared with this was on the, the screen as you came into the meeting. This is how we start each uh, Zoom meeting on um, Wednesday night. So usually what you'll see here is uh, a, a prompting question, something that we'll, a we'll ask the youth to get a pencil and a, a pen or um, a piece of paper out and reflect as we welcome other people into the Zoom session. So that's something that um, the youth are used to sing too. Um, that's not what I wanted to show you quite yet. Here we go. All right. Um, so let's, I'm just going to run through, I'm going to, uh, yeah, explain what we're doing this year, what the programming looks like. Um, and then we can dig into what sort of how, what that means specifically for, for us. Um, so this year our when I'm referring to transformations, people have got, I'm referring to, um, the confirmation programming. So we, we named it, um, so we can, um, yeah, name the series that we're doing. Um, each month we're going to study a different person or a group of people from the Bible. Last month it was uh, Aquila and Priscilla, and they were a married couple who were known um, and were close with the Apostle Paul, and they were known for having church in their home. When they weren't able to be out and about in Corinth, they were experiencing a lot of um, backlash from from other Jews and, and people who weren't um, on board with the message of Christ. And so there's a lot of tension between uh, different groups and they weren't out, able to be out and in person and worshiping. And so uh, that had special relevance for us as we're diving into confirmation material. 
uh, and thinking about where does church happen and, and who are we as people of God who um, can take ownership in our faith and, and can decide that, um, yeah, church is beautiful and gorgeous when we can be together in person and the fellowship and the relationships that happen when we're in person is, is something that is um, healing and essential, an essential part of our faith, but also what do we do now and, and how do we connect with ourselves in a way that, um, that, that uh, energizes and, and feeds our faith lives. So, um, so that was our first month. Um, next month, we'll be diving into next month as in, um, so let me clarify that. So each of these um, transformation series will last four weeks. In between, there'll be a break week. So that's what this week is. And that's why we are doing the parent meeting right now instead of the confirmation um, program Zoom meeting. And so there'll be a one week break in between. And then next week, we'll dive into the Roman soldier. And I'm really excited to have Dre Lick. Um, I don't know if you know uh, Heather Rainwater Moen's son. He is so cool. Um, and he's a part of the high school youth group. And he's a, a gorgeous example of, of someone who um, ask really good questions and, and struggles with their faith, but also has so much to say about, yeah, the truth of that, of that struggle. And, and what does that, what does that come to tell him about himself and about God? So he will be doing, um, this transformation into a Roman soldier. He has this like, um, armor, this Roman armor, like huge, like official armor. And what happens in the first video of the series of the month is, uh, like a transformation. Like, I don't know if you've seen, um, maybe your kids scroll through Instagram or Facebook and see, or TikTok and see like transformations of people into like different versions of themselves or different people. So basically Dre will transform on the video into a person, like from himself into a Roman soldier. And he'll talk about um, this particular Roman soldier who was assigned to the apostle Paul's house arrest. Um, and so you can see a theme here developing. Um, we're locked in at home and these people who experienced a similar um, sort of, uh, yeah, a similar sort of, um, I don't not cap, yeah, of isolation and being bound to their homes. Um, what, what good is God doing in their lives even when they're not able to be out and about? Um, so that'll be next month. And each week, during the series, the four week series, there'll be a six o'clock Zoom meeting on Wednesdays. Um, and he, um, here we go. So the six o'clock meeting on Wednesdays and we will be sharing, I will be sharing um, an activity for the week and a journal of prompts for each day of that week. You can see those on the website here, our website, um, which I'll move over to here. So you can see, for each week, you can click on the picture and find all that you need for that for that week. Um, so we have Priscilla and Aquila. This is me and Patrick. <laughs> um, and then we'll have like the journal prompts and the activity. So the first activity of um, this month of programming was to to set to establish a sacred space in your own home in your room, um, finding ways to um, identify the spiritual, like in, in their own lives, in their own spaces. Um, and it was, it's really cool. Uh, what people talked about. I'm not sure how far they got with doing, uh, the activity or actually journaling. Um, but that's where you all come in if you get the chance or if it fits in with your life and I know it might not, and that's fine. Um, but really I do think that they need some encouragement, uh, when it comes to, um, getting out there lots of them are doing a great job with with coming to the meetings but there's a lot of stuff during the week that i that i hope that they um dive into um and that might be something that we um we uh get into slowly or, or maybe that we'll have to adjust based on people's um capacity to do it so um so you can see here i have listed out the upcoming zoom meeting dates for this this next series of the roman soldier um, on Sunday, so this is something that um, I learned from last month, and I was hoping to be able to send out to everybody a packet with their um, with the program materials for the month. That didn't happen for a lot of reasons, uh, but mostly um, because of being vulnerable and honest. I 
I struggled to, to get it all together. So um, this is something that will help me out and um, help everyone get their materials for the month. Um, so on, su on Sunday, the very start, the very start of the program um, month, we will have a pickup for materials at Bethel from one to three. So the first one will be this Sunday. If you can't make it to, to swing by and grab the stuff, um, we can talk, we can, you can email me and we can figure out another time when I can either deliver that, deliver that to you or you can swing by Bethel to, to grab those things. Um, so down here, I have some gentle requirements. Like I said, that these uh, in no way um, establish someone's readiness to uh, be confirmed when it comes to their time. Uh, but just to set some um, guidelines for what we're hoping for. I, we would like for the kids to participate in at least half of the Zoom meetings for that month, um, two out of four. Uh, and then throughout the 30 days of that whole program month, complete 10 days of journaling. So I have a journal prompt for each day and that's not entirely realistic. I think especially as these people are coming to find their own way of speaking about their faith. I think that's uh, really challenging. It can become a daunting task to sort of find words and, and write words and feel pressure to have the words right. Um, but one thing I hope to emphasize is that um, the journals and, and our time together can be all about experimenting and being curious about um, what we believe and, and finding different ways to say it and not being so concerned about what's right or wrong and, and just sort of getting it out there and, and seeing how that forms. Um, uh, so, and then we are hoping to have them participate or complete two out of the four activities per month. So there's a new activity each week. Uh, a lot of them will inv invite the family, your families to be involved with them. I think that uh, is one way that we can emphasize that church is happening in the home and, and with the people that you uh, love and live with. Um, and so those are our gentle requirements for the transformations people of God part. I also wanted to invite them to view one Sunday morning service per month and write in their journals, uh, their takeaways. So I've included here a link to Bethel's YouTube channel. Um, there is a lot of options for them in terms of like what, what suits their style. There's traditional service. There's, well, there's two options. <laughs> there's a traditional service and then there's the contemporary service. And so it's their choice. Um, I'd like for them to, to hear the sermon and to, um, not necessarily take some sermon notes, but to, uh, yeah, find words to describe like what's something that they would take away from, from that sermon. Um, like I said here, um, or just a moment ago, you can see here that I'm emphasizing that it's okay to not um, feel like you have to check all the boxes, um, but that, yeah, setting these guidelines, these requirements is a way of um, providing some structure uh, for the youth. Um, upcoming events for us. Um, on the 24th, we have a trunk or treat at Bethel. That'll be sort of like a drive through um, for those who um, did not sign up to um, decorate their trunks. There'll be like a drive through. They'll, there's, hold on, that wasn't very clear. So there'll be two options for the trunk or treat at Bethel. One will be a drive through where you can drive through uh, the parking lot and see all the, the decorations. The other side will be people who are signing up to decorate their trunks and dress up and um, and have a spot in the parking lot where they'll, they'll stay and, and, um, and sort of cheer everyone on as they go through the line. Um, on November 21st, we'll have a bonfire at my house. Uh, the high schoolers have been uh, coming over each week actually. And we do uh, like a movie night. We have a 20 foot like blow up screen. So we'll like watch a movie, sit around the fire. Um, and so that's something that's been working really well is to have it um, in my backyard and, and to take advantage of um, sort of this whole church at home experience that we're, we're diving into. Uh, December 18th, we'll have a winter wonderland event at Elver Park. Um, and I wanted to put this on your radar for those. Um, it doesn't look like there's anyone here that has a current ninth grader, but um, we had the affirmation of baptism service this past Sunday and it went really well. And, um, but there are a few people that uh, who's for whom the timing didn't work out. So we'll have another confirmation this spring for those people. Um, so School at Horizons, this is something that is really exciting. It, my head basically uh, blew up when I was thinking about this. I was so excited um, because I um, get the sense from the youth that, uh, man, like it's school at home 
is for a million reasons uh, exhausting. Um, and so to pro provide respite for um, both families and for youth, we'll have um, a week at Horizons to do school and to um, do like adventure and activities. And so you can see here, we have a couple of dates set, one for December and then one week in March. Um, and we will decide if it's possible, even possible for us to, to do that week at Horizons based on these metrics that were, were recommended from the Bethel COVID task force. So um, come November 22nd, if we have less than 150 new cases per day, and if we have less than 10% positive tests per day here in Dane County, um, then we will be able to um, go ahead and do the Week at Horizons. Um, and then these are a couple strategies that we are proposing to um, make families feel safer and make sure that, uh, yeah, that what we're doing is, and what we are intending to do, providing respite and um, a really healthy Week at Horizons doing work and, and um, digging into nature and being around each other. Um, these are things that we, we're gonna have to do to um, be sure that re it really is a time of respite and that, that there's as um, minimal amount of concern as possible when it comes to um, sending your kid away for a week during COVID time. So we're asking that kids would be tested five to seven days prior to arriving at camp. Um, we request that they quarantine after testing. We're not sure uh, what exactly that would look like. That's something that um, both um, the COVID task force in Horizons and um, and then individual families too will we'll have to um, we'll have to have a conversation about to see what it means for you. Um, we will always be wearing masks inside. Outside, we will err we will lean towards wearing masks all the time. Although there might be some activities that um, we will be guaranteed to be spaced out on. So then we won't require them to wear masks. Um, each youth will get their individual room and we will only have 10 students or less per week. And so we'll have one, hopefully both in December and in March. And so um, ideally they'll give opportunities to um, different groups of kids to, to come out depending on what their, their family schedules look like. Um, and so you can um, see, uh, you'll receive a sign up form and some waivers and some in more information um, through email on November 1st. And so then that'll be um, some time when we'll be diving into um, getting ready for the December week um, before we can see officially if it'll be what will happen. Um, so that is what I, yeah. Okay, so that's the end of that. Um, I wanted to also um, address uh, your point, Shannon, your question, Shannon, about sixth grade. Um, here, I don't need to be sharing my screen right now. Let's come back. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> so um, yeah, so good question about sixth graders. So at the end of last year, we decided that we would um, have a separate group for fifth and sixth graders. Um, we found that some of the material and confirmation um, might be more approachable for uh, seventh and eighth graders. And so that, that um, it would be, yeah, I think it would be, we thought it would be helpful to yeah, separate the two groups out, fifth and sixth graders, seventh and eighth graders, and then provide um, developmentally appropriate uh, curriculum for the fifth and sixth graders. But with COVID and <laughs> yeah, as, um, as we find ourselves, um, yeah, trying to um, respond and, and provide to for the needs of um, yeah of the, the middle schoolers. It's going to be um, much yeah for this year. We're going to keep sixth graders in essentially is what I'm saying. So yeah, just because um, the um, excuse me, I lost my train of thought. Yeah, so yeah, so we wanted to provide sixth graders with the opportunity to be involved with confirmation material. The material is, um, I think, approachable for sixth through eighth graders, and that's something that we're being strategic about. But in the future, keeping in mind that um, that it is our intention to, to separate out the fifth and sixth graders and then seventh and eighth graders and um, be more attuned to um, what their specific needs and questions are. So for, yeah, so for this year, sixth graders are um, 
welcomed and invited to be part of confirmation next year things will be different and we'll um, hopefully go ahead and uh, develop a youth group for the fifth, fifth and sixth graders um, specifically um, I also what else was I going to bring up see now I'm losing my train of thought because I lost my, my my list is done <laughs> um, well let's stop there for a moment what kind of what questions and comments do you have to start out with um, about any of the stuff we've been talking about, school at horizons, programming, expectations, um, gentle requirements. Um, those kind I of have things. a question. I guess it's none of the above, but you could put sure. it in gentle requirements. Oh, yeah, it doesn't have um, to be. Yeah. One of the things that I would say out of the four weeks, two out of the four weeks, uh, my son or my son attended all four, I think um, two of the four, it was kind of like, Hey, it's confirmation time. No problem. And he kind of logged on and whatnot. I don't know how he participates because I don't eavesdrop and, and that's kind of his thing with you. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. yeah. but um, the other two of the four, it was like, oh, why do I have to do confirmation? Why are you always making me do things I don't want to yeah. do? Like <laughs> it's because he's had to stop playing video games and go do something else. Right. And, right. and it's, my personal opinion is it's not that there are other, you know, it's not that he doesn't want to do it. It's just in that moment, there's something he yeah, would rather be momentum. doing. Right, and right. so I'm forcing him to do something he doesn't want. And I've got my own answer to the, why do you have to do confirmation? Yeah. I mean, in some ways you don't have to do it, right? It's, it's kind of a thing, but just mm -hmm. no different than we go to church on Sunday and we do something yeah. like these are things our family does. But I guess I'd be curious to hear from other parents or hear your thoughts, Rachel, in terms of why do I have to do this stuff that, you know, I have to do. Yeah, I, I was just discussing some of this stuff with Lexi while and she's like, well, she's willing to do a lot of the fun stuff. She's not willing to do the, she does like, I don't want to keep a journal or this is stupid or, yeah. or, or just like, why do I have to, I mean, because a lot of times just getting her to church was half the battle. And now that we don't have church to go to really, it's like once in a while, it's like, I kind of have to Basically, I make a deal with her sometimes to get her to watch church. I'll watch what she wants me to watch if she'll if she'll watch church. But yeah, I, I, but I can. But but I think she. But I think once they get her there, like I, she does, really want to go to Horizons and stuff like that. So yeah, it's just a lot of the the work stuff, I guess. No kidding. Yeah, yeah, because it feels uh, more homework. Yeah, she's she has plenty of that too. Right. Right. Um, so a couple things, um, I mean, Ailey is my third. And so, um, for my son, I can speak to kind of like how we managed, um, you know, expectations around what he wanted to do and his own kind of development. And we just, um, kind of, he had writing expectations too. And at that point he's like, I'm doing all this writing in school. So we just said, well, um, why don't you just dictate then, you know, I mean, just so, you know, so he could at least do the reflections instead of the writing. So that may be, you know, he, he would do that. Idea too. Um, yeah. And, and then, um, I mean, it, uh, it wasn't, um, I mean, the other thing they did, they um, watched a lot of movies that were really, you know, and then just kind of, I mean, even, they even watched Breaking Bad in confirmation, um, which is like, I was at first kind of like, what are you talking about? But I will say it really, to, you know, it, it really got into good and evil. And I mean, all sorts of mm. related discussions, even though I was like, you're doing what? And we had to sign a release and I was like, you know, okay. <laughs> but the other thing I did, I mean, for him, I mean, he had such really good um, kind of questions around his faith. And he, I said that, well, I, you're not required to be confirmed, but we are asking you as your parents to go to confirmation and then you can make an informed decision whether you're going to decide to get confirmed. So, I mean, it doesn't sound like you're describing like a resistance in terms of not wanting confirmation more about just like, you know, activity wise, but, right. you know, that was really hard for me to then when he chose then not to participate um, in the confirmation. Um, now, you know, flash forward a few years, he's now in college and he goes to Catholic services every Sunday, not, you know, Sunday with his girlfriend. <laughs> so, I mean, he's, you know, he's, it's not, you know, he's still, I think, kind of exploring, but I mean, um, looking back, I'm glad that I didn't kind of require him. You know, I was like, I was trying to be like, okay, we'll kind of get creative. Well, you know, uh, and, 
and you know, at least it was the dialogue piece of it. Um, I have another daughter who went through the Bethel confirmation who meets every other week or once a month with a rabbi hmm. to explore um, her faith in that way and is actively like not wanting to, and, you know, and she was really active in the Bethel confirmation program. And that kind of is painful too. However, I'm going to support like yep. the fact that she's really seriously thinking about these things. So I don't know. It, you know, I think that like, if it's not about the writing, but it's about the reflection, if there's other ways, mm. and maybe even like, what about even having a conversation, you know, with someone else about the question? Yeah. You know, that's not even recorded. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, if the writing know. is what's intimidating. Yeah. There's a million other ways to, I mean, we can talk about that with our group too. I, hey, I really like that idea too. Like the way you um, presented it to your, your oldest, like with you know, giving him an option. So, okay, we're asking you to go to confirmation, but we're, but we're not requiring that you're being confirmed. Like, I, I think that's really wise, like giving, yeah, giving options, like I, giving sort of like sharing a sense of ownership. And, and so, yeah. And so while kids are in middle school, they're beginning to, yeah, to, to own um, certain parts of themselves. And so I think the more that we, allow them to decide, you know, as much as um, they might be hard decided decisions. not to. What's that? Hard. I mean, it was really yeah. painful. Yeah. So, you know, to like, to yeah. just have them ch not choose that. At the same time, it's like that. It's like, yep, it's, it's not my faith. This it has to be you. You have to have your own relationship with God and not, you know, like that's really what it's all meant to be about, you know? Yeah. You know what, that, that's something that was really special about this past weekend with confirmation with the affirmation of baptism service. Mm -hmm. We also had a, a faith statement retreat where we worked on our faith statements at Horizons the day before. Um, and one thing that the con the ninth graders were nervous about going into it. Um, and as we started talking about um, what would go into their faith statements, but the way they wanted to think about writing their faith statements, they were really worried about um, presenting something um, that their parents didn't agree with. So there, someone said like, um, I'm trying to think of her words. She said like, what if I, what I write and what I present isn't what my parents like want me to believe. Like they're going to say that I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. And so what I said, like what we said to her like then was like, this is your time. Like the reason you're being confirmed. Like this is your, like the, that's the, the whole spirit behind it. It's like that, this is your choice. You, you have this sort of agency. And, and so when, whenever you share it, whatever you share. Um, and if you're, whether or not your parents agree with you or not, um, yeah, you get to say, I'm confirmed now. <laughs> I'm confirmed now. And I make the decision, like I get to make the, these decisions about my faith. Um, and it's gonna lead me in all these directions and lead me to all these struggles and questions. But that's like the, the nature of, of everyone's, of our faith journey is that it's gonna be up and down and all around and we're gonna have doubts and questions. And, and so one person was saying, um, that she was going to open up her face statement um, saying, um, what if God isn't real? And she was a little bit nervous to say that at first and, and to present that as her face statement, as the beginning of her face statement, because she was like, wait, like the whole point of me, she was thinking that the whole point of her being confirmed was to sort of graduate from faith. <laughs> mm -hmm. that she would like have all the right answers. And, and so I know like um, historically, like uh, confirmation um, programs, like would often require that, confirmants like stand up and and answer questions like on the spot to the whole congregation mm -hmm. about about the bible and about about um about faith and and so like that's sort of that's the exact opposite of what we're going for here and and so um and so really um to, to get back to your question jennifer about like how to i don't know exactly how you would do this but um i guess the spirit behind what i'm wanting to to emphasize is like developing this like curiosity and this ownership and this like agency and in developing your own spiritual curiosity. And so even if it's um, like, okay, I know you don't want to go to confirmation, but um, I don't know, get curious about yourself. Like what's going on? Like what, what's going on in your inner world that, that you can't put words to that you don't understand. Like there's a, there's a lot of things that, um, that we, that that go that sort of flies under the radar in terms of like our sort of own inner worlds um and i don't know like confirmation from in my mind is about getting curious about like what's going on inside and and, and where god is and, and how do we under, come to understand god and so yeah that's not exactly an answer and i think um the other parents maybe had 
more concrete answers. Oh, I think they're all valid. Right? Very, I took notes as, as you guys were talking. Yeah, and, as well, you know, yeah. see, it's a journey, right? And COVID makes it extra hard. Yeah. Um, you know, my answer was, look, it's a, it's an hour Zoom call. It's, you know, right. you, before you were going in on Sundays and it took several <laughs> hours. And, you know, yeah. what's this? This is easy. Right. Yeah. But I find mm-hmm. though, too, though, like when we get into like some really good, yeah, mm-hmm. we, we get into some really good conversations about um, mm-hmm. the way we relate to our world. Like we talked last week, the last week of the Priscilla and Aquila series was about men and women and work. And, and people had a lot to say about um, the way they, they experienced their gender and press, pressures to, to fulfill these roles and their genders. And, and how do we connect that to the way we relate to each other and the way that we um, congregate at school and, and who do we seek out as friends? And, and um, yeah, what, a, what does God tell us about what it means to be who God made us to be. And, and, and we find that there's a lot more complicatedness in that that's not attached to these sort of social identifiers. So, yeah. So, and so people like really dig in, like when they find that, like these questions are, are maybe questions that, they, that have been circling their hearts already. Um, but finding words to even like name what these questions are, man. Yeah. I just, I just think that um, getting curious and, and sort of making these connections between their inner worlds and, and society and God, like these are, yeah, connections that are, um, the practice of making these connections is, is, is um, essential for like their faith journeys. It's a good practice. What other questions and concerns or comments do you have on what, we've, what I've shared um, from the parent meeting agenda or um, about COVID and, and uh, programming in general, or what, are your, what other comments and questions do you have? There have been a few emails I've gotten about School at Horizons, wondering how exactly that would happen. Um, I don't see any of those people here at the moment, so um, I'll be sure to share this with them afterwards. Um, but um, do you have any initial thoughts or impressions about what that would be like for your family, if that's something that you'd be comfortable with? Um, what's the need? Um, are there other ways that those needs could be filled besides sending your kids away for a week? What do you think? Well, I think it's for like for us, I think that's probably something that we probably could use because Lexi's here all the time. She doesn't get to, unless except for occasional trip to her grandparents, she doesn't get to go out. I mean, she's, but she's, of course, wants to make sure we're safe. She is like, are they going to be wearing masks? Are they going to social distance? She's very concerned about that. And it sound and it looked like, yes, they are going to bab. They're going to have your own rooms. So I'm able to, so I'm able to assure her that because that's about the level. Yeah, that's amazing the weight that the kids of themselves have taken on about uh, in, in terms of COVID safety. Um, yeah, like I like last weekend, um, one person who was attending the retreat was expressing like this sort of distress that they had, their, one of their parents is especially vulnerable um, to if they had gotten COVID that they would be in a really bad situation. And she s- expressed this sort of weight that she was, exper- like, was feeling um, of responsibility to take care of her parents. And that's something that, um, that usually uh, I know that um, we try to stray away from, right, is, is, um, is emphasizing a, a responsibility in, in, in kids to take care of their parents. But man, like when it comes to COVID, like those sort of rules are um, out the door. And there's, yeah, it's, it's hard to, to not, um, yeah, to not carry that weight as a kid. Yeah, and then also some of the things, it's like I haven't even seen my in-law since March. Yeah. I haven't been able to. Yeah. Only to, I mean, they, I mean, they only, like, they kind of, like, they kind of helped help with Lexi when we had an issue with school, when with school starting, because they were, were fixing our roof at the time. So we had, so she had to go over there. But other than that, it's like, yeah, she's cut off in, yeah, lots of different ways. And that's been hard for, family. but it's, but I think that maybe like, like, I know Lexi isn't, she's not, she's not be into keeping a journal, but I could see her like with some like she'll I could see her like even if she was like having a like a discussion with my in-laws or whoever it's like we watched the service this week what do you think about it type of thing yeah it doesn't have to be even complete sentences like just a few like and yeah like what what emotional response do you have from this yeah or if, for her I might just have to get the questions I might just have to get something verbal instead of just talk to her instead of is she just, I just don't think she won't keep a journal yeah like, well, that's okay. You know, one thing that I, you know, that I'm thinking about when it comes to um, 
yeah, supporting your kids and in, in, in their reflections, whether it be written or verbal, mm -hmm. is modeling this practice of like not needing to get it right all the time. Yeah. Like I think, yeah, kids feel a lot of pressure that like when it comes to faith, like there are right answers and wrong answers and that their parents like know, like when you get, when you become an adult, you sort of, all the answers are sort of revealed and they're sort of like, yeah, available to you. Um, if, only. if only, yeah. And so, um, so I think one thing that's really helpful um, during this time, but like, yeah, during this, like, especially ambiguous, like ambivalent time with COVID life, but just in general, like experiencing our faiths, like um, as adults, we can model this process of like questioning and struggling and not knowing all the answers. Um, and I think that's something that like frees them up to explore in a different way. And, and so maybe that would sort of relieve uh, a level of tension when it comes to um, doing their own reflections, however that looks, um, to know that, yeah, all the answers aren't there. And sort of this is the nature of faith is that it's not going to be um, clear all the time. And that, yeah, even my parents don't know all the way. And that's sort of Part of the mystery and the beauty of it. Jennifer, I saw that you unmuted yourself. Did you have? A oh yeah. no, I'm. I'm. I think you're, to your question about horizons, um, we will let. I'm. I feel. Um, I feel very comfortable with all of the procedures and things that you know you and Horizons and others have put in place. So I don't think I personally have a safety issue. Um, although every day the the Wisconsin numbers skyrocket yeah. all over the place, but um, yeah. I think it'll be you know sort of Harrison's choice, right? Like what does he want to do, and does he feel comfortable, and is he interested? And as long as those boxes are checked, then we'll check all the other boxes to make sure that you know, he's real, he's, you know, able to go. And if he doesn't feel comfortable or doesn't want to do some other things that are required or, you know, is yeah. nervous about, you know, being in a room by himself or whatever it happens to be, mm -hmm. um, then, then he wouldn't, um, but it'll be his choice and, you know, we'll encourage him. I think he would have a, man, he loves going out there. So I, I think it would be something he'd want to do. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Good feedback. Um, yeah, I don't, I think that all the precautions are, that you put in place are, um, I mean, those sound good to me. Um, we've already had a couple little COVID scares last week. Um, one of my kids had lost her sense of taste and smell. Um, so she was tested. I don't know where she would have gotten it, but and she was tested negative, but you know, it was a little bit of a scare. Yeah. Um, for Ailey, I think, um, it's, I'll, I'll, it would be her choice. Um, I mean, she's not, she has a, like three neighbors w that we all decided that we would let the girls play together. And that like, she's kind of a little fatigued out of the same three or for months now, but it's <laughs> at least for a social outlet, it's been good. So it'd be interesting. Cause I mean, I think there's also like, oh no, a week without them. I mean, she's become mm -hmm almost like, I would like her to do this but I'm just not sure that she'd want to and I mean she, it would be her choice um she didn't have the best last time she was at horizons because she went to it wasn't the last summer it was the summer before and she um had gone um for a, you know overnight <laughs> camp and everybody had a friend but her yeah. so yeah. it was um it wasn't probably the best like you know memory of the place so I'm not sure she would you know I would want her to give it another time. chance you know um but other than that i mean um you know i think it'd be great if i could incur you know convince her to consider it so <laughs> yeah i think it'd be good for her yeah well that's one thing i'm hopeful about is like when we as we um i i, I know i know that um yeah like the consistency of like once a week is like hard but like one thing that i that i'm hopeful for um, and one thing that I was like really hopeful for, like when we were doing confirmation, like youth quake every week was to like build in like that sort of consistent and reliable community. Um, and so that like, they know, um, like when they go to horizons for a week at horizons that they like, they know like this, like I belong in this group. Um, I have my place in this group. I have this role in this group. Um, and that's something that's established like over time and that they have to experiment with and, and experience themselves, um, as they're sort of like, um, yeah, attaching themselves and rooting themselves in the community. So, um, so I'm hopeful that yeah, when we have opportunities to to connect, that um, yeah, that the the kids feel yeah, like they're they have a place, and that um, that yeah, when they imagine like doing events, that they can know that like hey, yeah, that's my church family that I'm going to spend time with. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, that's all I have um, for you uh, now in terms of, yeah, of a sort of mapping out um, what's coming up for us and, and thinking about how we're strategizing to, to do things now. Um, I had one more question before we close. I wanted to see if you had any thoughts about or ideas about what might be um, a good offering for us uh, at Bethel to, to offer to your, your families and your kids. Like what's something, um, for example, like Lynn and I connected, I think it was last week and, and she mm -hmm. mentioned, um, like we talked about, guitar, we were gonna start guitar lessons, guitar group lessons last spring before things closed down. Um, and so we talked about um, having Lexi and I get together um, via Zoom or in person, socially distanced to, to do a little bit of guitar uh, lessons. But um, so things like that, like what sorts of uh, other ideas uh, might appeal to your youth um, when it comes to yeah, being connected and, and doing activities together? You don't have to have an answer now, but. I have to ponder, it's a good question. Yeah. I don't have a, one? yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't have an immediate answer. Yeah. Um, what might, yeah, what might be you good? Know, Okay. I do think like even I, I'd, I'd read about the curriculum and the transformations, but hadn't dove deep, you know, as you're describing them and how, how much it pertains to being stuck at home and all those, like yeah. it's it clearly a lot of thought has gone into it and, and that's noticed and recognized and, and certainly appreciated. Um, when I look at the journal prompts, I'm like, well, I want to answer these questions. You can, yeah. you know, yeah. I'll take your book. It's beautiful and I'll do it. Um, you know, I, I appreciate all that's being done, even if, um, you know, at the moment, there's some resistance, I guess, to, to yeah. doing you know, some fine. of it. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, we all keep at it and we keep trying. And, you know, some of it could just be what it's like to be a 12 year old boy. You know, they're, they're just slower on the uptake than some other things. But yep. yeah, no, it's noticed and it's mm -hmm. great. Thanks. I, and I actually like the Wednesday night thing too. It works really well yeah. and convenient. Yeah, oh, good. Then you can get a little, come back yeah. to our extra work in there. Yeah. <laughs> well, great. Thank you, friends. Um, let's close in prayer. God, thank you so much for your presence and your spirit. We know that you fill us with, with life and with hope and with energy. And, and we ask that you help us tap into that. Help us tap into your promise for, for picking us up when, when we fall and your promise for, for providing a sense of hope um, when things feel despairing. Um, we welcome you into our hearts, into our families, into our homes. We invite you to um, make known um, the work that you are doing in our, in our families and kids' lives. Um, we know that you are there with them and that you're working through them and working in them. Um, bless our community, bless the work we're doing together and, and bless uh, these hard times as we, we, um, we come together and, and rely on each other and, and know that we are also leaning on you as we rely on the, the fellowship of, of our congregation and church family. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, friends. All right. Let me know what other questions you have through email. Sounds okay. good. Bye. Rachel. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.